Hi guys, this is John Hatsis and I'm joined by Katie Colucci, Rebecca Chancellor, Kira Sullivan, and our special guest, Stephanie Sullivan, Principal Thomas Taylor. <laughs> and welcome to this episode of Carpool Karaoke. <laughs> All right, so we've got some some music up for you guys to sing. We're starting with the ABC song, so let's get started. No, I'm just kidding. We're not actually, we're not actually doing Carpool Karaoke, but we wanted to. We want to say that live from 31 Stafford Avenue, by the way, we'd like to welcome you to a special edition of In the Minivan. So first question, Dr. Taylor Miss Sullivan, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. I feel fantastic. Yeah, I have blueberry yeah. coffee. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's right. post-graduation. It's post-graduation, yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, our next question for you is, how do you feel uh, about In the Minivan becoming a staple of Stafford County's entertainment apparatus for years to come? <laughs> Dr. Taylor. I think it's, cri I think it's critical. Um, I, I am actually very curious. That's actually one of my questions for you all. Is oh. Who are you going to pass this off to? Well, we've already, we're already having auditions, actually. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. We'd love to put this on uh, Stafford County Public Schools' YouTube page, actually. Potentially. So, sure. Depending yeah. on you guys' answers, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Miss Sullivan, any, any other further commentary? No, I love this. I'm excited all for All right. It. So in all seriousness, we wanted to start off, you know, with teachers, it's pretty apparent um, what the what they do every day. You know, like they teach, they grade, they do things like that. But for administrators, have them. it's a little bit yeah less visible <laughs> to the naked eye. So I wanted to ask, like, to take you through kind of a day in the life of Miss Sullivan and Dr. Taylor. So, like, it's 1.45 a.m., you know, your alarm goes off, you get up from bed, <laughs> you know, like, what is, what is a normal day in the life? this morning for those donuts, I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I'm 4.30 in the morning, so okay, I my girls wow. jump in bed with me and we're up. Um, let's see, we get up, we go to school, mm -hmm. we do a few emails in the morning, but then it's just in the hallways and saying hello to people. Yeah. Um, you have a to-do list and you never get to it. And yeah. then you just, but that's the best part is you get to see all the kids, you get to see all the staff, and you just problem solve all day. All right. So that's the day. But you also get text messages from the superintendent. <laughs> I get text messages from the superintendent. And yes. we have conversations throughout the day. That's and conversations like throughout the day. Yeah. Well, I, I get up at the same time. Hey, Miss um, Sullivan, here's this great new meme that I found about <laughs> <in our> schools. <laughs> Well, I get up at the same time as Miss Sullivan. Mm -hmm. um, I, I check my email first thing in the morning. Um, and actually, uh, three days a week, I, I go to the gym with the principal at uh, wow. North Stafford High School. Oh, wow. Dr. Turner. Yeah, a so, FOMO here so, on the invite. Yeah. Um, so, no. But thank you uh, for inviting yourself. Um, oh! But it's nice to have an accountability partner and, uh, and, and you know, come, come back home and check some more email and then uh, head to work. But I usually have uh, a ton of meetings, but, uh, yeah. but I also try to work in um, at least uh, one or two school visits a yeah, day. Yeah, that's great. So uh, we have uh, over 30 schools in Stafford County. So I've made it to um, all of the schools in Stafford County at least four times. Wow. And a lot of schools, I, I've made it to a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, the, the record for this year was actually Colonial Forge. Oh, uh, oh I visited, you know, I visited yeah, Colonial yeah. Forge 24 times this uh, past year. What's your favorite school to visit? Uh, you know, I will say that that's, <laughs> that's a tough call because there are a lot of great schools. I, I actually love visiting um, all of our schools, but each has like a, a unique little twist. Um, going to Kate Waller Barrett in the mm. morning is actually really exciting and fun. Um, they have uh, a lot of a lot of excitement and, and a lot sure. of things going on, a lot of music. So, oh, um, but usually our, our nights go pretty late into the evening. So um, I usually button up sometime around seven, eight, or nine. Um, sometimes even as late as ten. And uh, John, you may remember this. Some of our school board meetings when I first oh, got yeah. to Stafford County went a little bit later yeah, than later, that. Later, they, 10 they, yeah. they went into the next day. So yeah. that's oh, how it goes gosh. sometimes. Yeah. I'd like to change my answer. Okay. So I start my mornings at 4.30 and I get a text message from Dr. Taylor and Dr. Turner. And then we all go to the gym together. <laughs> from now on, probably. From now on. Did you have a follow-up? Is that what you were No, that was my follow-up. Oh, day. yes. Okay. Uh, um... So what are some kind of unique perks and kind of quirks of the job that not many people know about that you guys get to do other than go to the gym and text each other? <laughs> um, one of the highlights of the job, besides getting in the classrooms and seeing everybody, I love seeing all of our different programs. So yeah. 
my first year at Mountain View, our culinary arts program had a mac and cheese tasting. Ooh. And so we got to go and try all these different mac and cheese. Yeah. And I was a judge and that was amazing. <laughs> um, but then just getting invited to do little things um, and seeing all the kids after school and sports. And they are late nights, but it's just, that's kind of like the magic of the job. And yeah. Um, one thing that we had this year is I was a guinea pig for a keratin treatment in Ooh. our cosmetology program. Good thing wow. to be a guinea pig for. Oh <laughs> gosh, I was nervous, but like, I was like in the middle of the class and they did my hair and everybody watched me, but it turned out beautiful and the kids did a great job. So Fantastic. little things like that. Did, did, question, did we do the, the chili competition this year with the teachers? We did and the school board came and they tasted all Who of the won? chili. Oh, oh, Chef Cunningham. Oh, yes. That feels that, like an unfair yeah, advantage. I know. She, it was fantastic. Oh, cheating. It was. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. got the best seat in the house at graduation. So yeah. every time I get to go to a graduation or some kind of special event. Does that include fifth grade graduation? Yeah, I got to oh, tell yeah. you, like every, every that school now? event that I go to, I get the best seat in the house yeah. and, you know, get to see some pretty awesome stuff. I will say this. There were some pretty outstanding performances Thank at you. Uh, <laughs> Mountain View High School this past year. Um, Les Mis is my yeah. favorite musical. I did not know and that. You all did just such a fantastic did job. Did you cry? I, honestly, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, a, a little bit. Um, because it was so well executed you. and you all did such a fantastic job. Thank you. But, you know, I will say that the food tasting piece. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Can't be too bad. That is, uh, that is not a bad perk. No. Yeah. Not a bad perk. But, but really the perk comes from, um, seeing you all at your best. Mm -hmm. And, and we really do get a front row seat at that. And that is probably the best part of the job. That's true. Awesome. All right. So our next question is, according to our intense research, we did a lot of digging, especially people in the back, our, our, our designated researchers. So if they're incorrect, it's on them. Oh, <laughs> um, you are both relatively new to your roles and Dr. Taylor to the Stafford County in general. So my question is twofold. Um, how did you get your job and why did you want specifically your role specifically in Stafford County? Mm. Ooh, all a right. Question. It is a loaded question. So I was, I'm gonna go way, way back. No, not so far back, but um, <laughs> I started as a math teacher, Dixon Smith. Yeah. And I loved, this is gonna sound kind of teachery and cliche, but I love seeing all the light bulbs go off. Yeah. Um, when it was just very difficult topics and all the kids were just like, oh, I hate this, this math stinks and it's no fun. Um, but then I'd, I'd say, guys, just struggle for a little bit. And they're like, you want me to struggle? Like, that's so <laughs> mean, Miss Sullivan. Um, I was Miss Root at the time. Um, but the productive struggle, and then you automatically see these like light bulbs go off and the faces are just like, oh, I get this. And they can help each other. I wanted to see that. And I told the superintendent that hired me at the time to be an assistant principal at Rodney Thompson Middle School. Um, the only reason why I would ever leave the classroom is if I can do what I'm doing here at just a broader scale. And that's mm -hmm. a very cliche answer. I think that you get it all the interviews, but it truly was. And it's, it's affected me as I go through just administration because I can work with teachers and staff and community members where you do have those little light bulb moments where you just have conversations and maybe just something clicks and we're able to move forward for the collective whole. Um, I wanted to jump into the role as principal, which um, I think is a crazy, you have to be a little bit crazy in that part, um, which I've learned along the way, but it is the best job I think I've ever had in my life. Um, I can do all the things that I want to do, but there's just a different spin on it where for teachers, I have a focus on instruction and learning and um, I'm seeing some of those light bulb moments go off with teachers as we go through. So I'm very excited about that. And then I can get into classrooms and still have yeah. my happy place. Yeah. So I, I, I've you, enjoyed it. To piggyback on what you were saying about <laughs> like being principal, I think this year is like the best for all of us for sure. Oh, and I like, love that. I like personally, like I appreciate your like positivity and like within the school, I think it has spread a lot. And mm -hmm. um, like we were talking about how um, the freshmen like must be like so lucky and like yada yada. Mm -hmm. So um, you're doing a really good job. Man. I really you. appreciate it. Well, and I said this before, and again, I think the more I say it, it's kind of cliche, but I would not have wanted to do this with a better class. Aww. So you guys have taught me a lot this year. The senior class has their ups and downs and everything. So thank you guys. I'm going to cry. I'm kidding. Aww. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> Dr. Taylor, your turn. No, you guys are so lucky to have uh, Miss Sullivan. She really is fantastic. And it was so easy to hire Miss mm. Sullivan <laughs> because she really was just the best person for you guys and was just a great fit to be your principal in your graduating year. 
and it's tough because you've you were used to one leadership style yeah. and one principle for a long time yeah. and there's like to, the goat to of make, principles yeah <laughs> then, no seriously it, yeah and, and dr stemple is as good as it gets yeah um so much so that uh when, when i was coming up i never wanted to be a school administrator i always wanted to stay in the classroom and be a teacher i feel like i kind of got hoodwinked into it um, but when I started going to principal conferences, there was this guy in Stafford and, uh, he would give presentations on like oh, what to do. Oh, yeah. That was Dr. Ah! <laughs> so, um, you know, he's, he's definitely is uh, famous in the principal world, yeah. um, as to what to do. But, um, I've been a superintendent before I was a superintendent in a really small district. Yeah. And then I was a deputy superintendent in a really, really big district, a district that was twice the size of Stafford mm -hmm. County wow. in Chesterfield. Wow. Uh, right outside of Richmond, yeah. um, 65 schools, 63,000 students. Um, but that that community was so similar to Stafford when I was looking to get back into the superintendency. Um, Stafford really kind of resonated with me and some of the needs and some of the things that, that you all were doing here. Uh, but I also saw this as a great opportunity because I think um, in a lot of ways, unfortunately, Stafford is like the school system that time forgot. Uh, and that there are a few things that we need to do to kind of catch up with the rest of the world. And um, it was just a great opportunity. And I'm from the D.C. area. So yeah. coming back here was was a great opportunity. And, and um, it was actually my my college roommate who went to Brook Point High School and wow. was in the second wow. graduating class at Brook Point. Wow. Um, who, who was like, hey, man, you should really look at Stafford as an option and, and really pointed me in that direction. And what college was that? It was actually Virginia Wesleyan in Norfolk oh. is where I got my undergraduate degree. And then I went to UVA for a master's and doctorate. And then I got an MBA at uh, William & Mary. Oh, wow. Lots of all the boxes, yeah. Good yeah. try. Um, there we go. So now there are many youngsters, obviously, that are going to see this in the future, you know, with eyes <laughs> gleaming, you know, dreaming of the future, who want not just to be, you know, a principal or a superintendent, but want to be in this minivan. And so <laughs> what, advice, a good goal. Good life <laughs> what advice would you give to students who would like a job like yours? So I would say... If they want a job like ours, they've got to be a little bit crazy. You know? <laughs> um, honestly, I think it starts with just having that like love and passion for kids and love and passion for teaching. Um, all the rest kind of just falls into place because what I've learned is that once you, I don't know, once you have that spark, it's really hard to describe, but once you have that spark and you just see those light bulb moments, um, it's like you just want more of it and you want to see it grow throughout. And so it's kind of like that positive energy. You just... Once you feel it, you see it, and it, it just spreads. So the administrative part, um, Dr. Taylor talked talk to me about this when I wanted to get my doctorate, and that's mm -hmm. still kind of like something I need to do. It's a checkbox, um, but continue the education. I think being a lifelong learner and just wanting to learn more about the field um, is going to be your next step, but it's it doesn't start unless you have that passion and that desire to just want people to do better and want people to be them best, their best versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Well, I would I would echo um, what Miss Sullivan said about having a passion for um, serving others and mm -hmm. and really wanting to give back to your community. As far as the aspiration of getting inside this minivan, yeah, <laughs> I would say that you have to ignore a lot of the red flags. <laughs> Walking up the hill into the back corner, getting in a minivan with a bunch of people, um, because no, this is not the least bit weird. Okay. I'm uh -oh. Weird, I'm a hostage. <laughs> Um, oh, wait, I have a question. Yeah. What made you guys agree to doing this? Cause That's actually I, a good question. Because I, I was like, I can't believe they're getting in the car. <laughs> like, well, I, you, you did ask us in public. <laughs> yeah. so it's made it very hard <laughs> to, to decline. To decline <laughs> so for the record, they asked me privately. I made it public for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, then there's no excuse for me. I feel like I was trapped. Yeah. And, I, and I tried to create a list on the whiteboard yeah. of, of all the red why flags. This was yeah. not necessarily a good idea <laughs> so that I could decline gracefully. <laughs> it didn't work out. It didn't work out. Um, just, a, just a short follow-up. Has that advice sort of, not for the minivan, for the profession, <laughs> has the advice changed over time? Like, has there been some sort of like modernization that has made the field a little bit different? Oh Isn't that's gosh. made your field evolve? No, I think the core of all that's the same for me. I okay. think there's very, well, there's very difficult conversations mm -hmm. um, and different ways to have those conversations. And 
how I've evolved is just learning how to have those with different people and groups of people. But the feeling never changes because honestly, it goes back to what's best for you guys. Yeah. Um, because honestly, that's why we're here every day. So once that changes, I feel like I need to get out of this field because then I'm doing a disservice to you. Yeah. Um, but that that core initial feeling never changes. But it is there are skills that you learn along the way, and you have good mentors like Dr. Simple, Dr. Yeah. Taylor, um, that have helped me learn and grow. Um, but no, the feeling never changes. So I got actually a slightly different answer. Really. Um, so. You know, my mother used to say that very few things in this world are complicated, <laughs> but there are a lot of things that are unpleasant. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's a lot of unpleasant things going on in the world today that we didn't have to deal with when we were your age mm -hmm. and when we were coming up. Um, and the world has gotten more complex or unpleasant. There's, there's a lot of... Um, <clears throat> combative ideas mm. being exchanged in the public space. You have a technology component that we never had to deal with yeah. Yeah. Um, that has made it really challenging. And and though I agree with Miss Sullivan that at, at our core, like that part has never changed in terms of the belief structure necessary to get into this job and to do this work. But um, the, the landscape has gotten really interesting That's and true. um and a lot more challenging than it used to be and so i think that there are fewer people that are staying in um, education and in the industry because they can sometimes feel like a punching bag and mm -hmm. um and and can sometimes take a lot of abuse when that that really wasn't the case a few years ago yeah, yeah. so yeah you you nailed that you nailed that That's true. All right, so uh, now we're going to do to the two questions of doom is what I titled this section. Uh, <laughs> the car just like explodes. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you guys, one of the anyone in the back, want to take one of the first of the two questions of doom? What's wrong I, with I you? I haven't looked at the two questions. Oh, of you doom. haven't looked at the two questions of doom. Do you want to look at the first of the two Can questions of doom? That page has a hole in it. <laughs> okay, okay, my bad. Was... It was on the floor and my feet were wet, and I like put it. I, actually, it, I think it came from my water bottle. You blamed it on oh. me. No, you took responsibility for it. <laughs> <laughs> the one about the, the second question. The, the one about the hour. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, okay, the hour. I'll say the question of doom number one. Do you support keeping an hour lunch? Mm. I think that that's for you first. I thought right? that was for you. That's why I looked at you. Oh. It, it, this one's mainly for Miss Sullivan. I think. There you oh, go. okay, great. Thank you. You still have to answer though. Yeah. <laughs> so I like the one-hour lunch, but I'll tell you why I like the one-hour lunch, and I think there's still a lot of room to grow. So I like the one-hour lunch because my focus. And I know sometimes I press this too hard, but it's instruction and learning. Sure. And I need to make sure that you guys have all the opportunities for you in the building. So yeah. the purpose of one hour lunch initially, and it still needs to be kind of rethought and reframed in this way, is to have an opportunity for you guys to have remediation time. So if you don't get something in the classroom the first time, you have an opportunity to get that reteaching moment with your teacher or somebody else the second time. Um, what it evolved into is, um, you know, getting some work done, a de-stress for students. Um, I think it turned into a lot of good things that we did not expect, uh, but it also had a lot of freedom that I think some students were not ready for. And I think that's our responsibility to start teaching some of those skills as far as how to navigate that, um, especially with some of our freshmen and sophomores that are coming up into this. Um, I know we're always looking at student safety first, so yeah. I know there have been some things where students have maybe not made the best choices during that freedom and i think again that goes to responsibility with us just um training some of that but also setting up parameters where everybody is safe first yeah um i, th I think closing like the academic wings was nice because at first i was like oh my god i can't get anywhere but then <laughs> like having to take a test during lunch and the academic wings being closed like that was really nice because it also like as someone who, like, I've had to miss school a lot mm -hmm. for, like, doctor's appointments or, like, uh, have a lot of things, like, after school, like, that hour-long lunch mm -hmm. is, like, super helpful. Um, so, and also, like, the de-stressing part of it, and I know you guys probably agree, you're travel students, too, mm -hmm. so it's different for you guys. Not that like, that's a thing anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which was, hey, not, not complaining, no complaints here, so. Um, but, like, getting that brain brink, I th think, made third block a lot more productive, yeah. but I don't know if that's just me. No, I think it's yeah. Well, and you guys were very helpful because there's been a lot of emails that I've gotten, not from you guys, but just travel students like, hey, remember us? We're still traveling. Please help us with announcements. So, I mean, that's why I say you guys have been instrumental with a lot of things this year. So that was just one of them. Your turn. Mm. 
I thought you did a very nice yeah. job. Oh, thank you. And I have no further comments You know, I think the first time I heard about the one hour lunch, um, I was like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. um, and mm. I think I had the same reaction that I think a lot of parents and a lot of uh, teachers had, which was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I will say that in the aggregate, it's been positive. Okay. And I think that there's a lot of room for improvement, but I do support it continuing because um, I, I think that there is a net positive that that will ultimately end up benefiting the students that are still in the school and also um, you know just on a lot of different on a lot of different levels I, I will say that I think that there are some changes that need to take place mm -hmm. um, this was never something that we required at the county level um, this was something that each school had the, the license to make their own decisions about this part of the schedule. And so um, I'm pleasantly surprised with some of the outcomes. Sure. All right, so now we're gonna move to our second question of doom. I got this one. Um, <laughs> I, I can ask this one. Second question Is it in doom? order? Um, no. Oh. <laughs> no, it is <laughs> not in order. I'm sorry, can you ask the next one? Uh, if it's the one that's after the question, no. I can just ask, I can ask that I, one. I think I'm moving out of order. You guys are but, really um, bad interviewers. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, how about this? Can you do the, can you do the end now, now after the, now we've covered the serious stuff? Because that's all just one big question, basically. Sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so um, tell me when you want me to ask the question, John. <laughs> sure, okay. So I wanted to... I'm actually going to Dr. Taylor on this first. Oh, good. So something, um, <laughs> something interesting about your role is that you have seven bosses. Yes. Uh, seven members of the school board. And it gets even more interesting that all seven of those members are elected. Mm. Um, so then how do you manage sort of having so many bosses that sort of have... A, a democratic element, right? They, they're responsible to the voters while you're more responsible to them, you know, in that way. Like, how do you kind of manage that relationship and kind of keep them all happy? Oh, my gosh. Well, I don't think that there's a way to keep them all happy. Okay. Um, and and uh, on my worst day at work, I work for only four people. <laughs> but on my best day at work, I work for seven. Uh -huh. um, and and that, that, I think, is an important part of the process. And I think having citizen leadership over public institutions is a good thing. Yeah. yeah it really is. Um, because it adds a connectedness layer uh, to um, what we do to the, to the broader community. Um, I would say one of the biggest detractors for coming to Stafford County is I came at a time that was right after an election. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the group of people that hired me was not the group of people that I ended up serving. Yeah. I only actually worked for the group of people that hired me for two months. Yeah. That's it. And then a whole nother group of people with a, a different set of ideas and a different set of priorities came into um, office. And it did mean that we had to kind of reset a little bit and we had to kind of refocus a little bit because I think the group that hired me definitely had one direction that they were planning on going and then this group had other ideas. So yeah. um, some of it is being nimble um, and, uh, uh, and, and being um, aware that other people definitely have ideas and that they wanna bring them to the table. And then the other piece of it too is, is I've been doing this a really long time. I know, it, I know how to run a school system <laughs> and, um, and doing some education of the board and helping them understand why certain things have to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. okay. And then Ms. Sullivan, my question for you is that you're definitely a very public figure. You know, like the Mountain View community, like you know, everyone knows you. So like, how, like, how does that? Is that ever like a a concern for you having like so many people watching kind of your every move? Is that something that ever kind of factors into your decision making? Or is that? Yeah. Probably scaring her right now. Yeah. No, sorry. No, no, seriously. Sorry, like, where's, where's, where's the camera? Where are they watching you all the time? Um. No. So I think that just. Um, I am. A, it doesn't seem like it some days, but I am an introvert. Like I like. I'm a homebody. Like I like to be at home. I like. We have like our whole nature thing at home. So my girls like ride their little four wheelers and that's just my happy place. So I may be like the public figure, which I don't really see myself. I know I am, but um, I don't know. That doesn't really phase me. I think you just, I've always been just very true to myself. And um, I think there is a, there is a thought process of, okay, when I go into public, you don't want to be like, 
super crazy like my toddlers sometimes when we eat spaghetti they'll take their shirts off so it's like uh -huh. that's just like normal social skills that we teach them at home but i don't ever have like a <laughs> yeah. i don't know so I don't like, you'll have to when we go to a school, restaurant okay. right yeah. like please girls don't take your shirts off we're out in public um but no i think that's just <laughs> i don't know why i'm sharing Transform that right now skills <laughs> to a high school principal it is forever on this camera i know but they're, for the record, they are four and five, yes. not like 18. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just make that very clear to everybody. Um, but I do think that there is, I don't know. I don't really think about that. Yeah. I just, I, I think it's important that we always, and I say this to you guys, but we always um, put our best selves forward. So especially when we're in the school, when we're outside the school, that is a reflection of Mountain View. Um, so that's just an expectation I have for myself for you guys, but that's kind of why I say, why we say that assemblies, guys, best foot forward, make sure you're smiling, make sure we're dressed, you know what I mean? So, no, I don't know, but now right. I'm a little self-conscious that yeah, you said I'm fishbowl and everybody's <laughs> looking at me. Um, so, sorry, 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 we're gonna, we can punt over now to Cure with okay. the next question, this I promise. This is the one after the one Rebecca asked, right? It's the one after, it's the, gosh. Cut. No, I'm kidding. Now that we've covered the serious stuff, we can move back to the fun stuff. Okay. That that and, part. And, and the doctor says, now we are all members of this county's greatest high school. <laughs> Read the rest of it. Okay. And I think that is a pretty objective statement. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote the script, guys, if you can tell. So. But Miss Sullivan, what is the best part about Mountain View? What is the best part about Mountain View? I have to pick one? Best part about Mountain View. So you can Not pick more than one. Colors. Oh. No, we're so officially we're gonna change it to uh, maroon and gray, <laughs> like Ohio State, right? I was thinking <laughs> blue and orange again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> says north can be orange Whatever and blue. Whatever. <laughs> <wall. laughs> the best part about Mountain View. Um, so, is it gonna be too cliche if I say it's the kids? That, I mean, honestly, it's you guys being in the building. So in the summer, in two days, I'm kind of dreading it because it becomes this like ghost town in the yeah. building. It's just so large and empty, but it's just the spirit in Mountain View. And that's because of you guys and the teachers and staff that we have. Um, but even the first day of school, the last, I mean, last day for seniors, ugh. Mm. Um, but it's just like, it leaves because it's just a feeling that leaves. So it's you guys, it's the culture, it's the excitement, it's everything that you bring to the building day to day. Um, even on hard days, that's what makes me want to get up and go because I get to experience that and that's going to be better than anything going on um, elsewhere so yeah. and then for dr taylor what is the best part about stafford schools mom view high school yeah so so this is uh, <laughs> this is not yeah, dissimilar to, to what miss sullivan said and I would say just in general, it is the people in this community and, and how much they really do care. Um, and they they really do want the, the best for you in their own way. Even the folks that are not like outwardly supportive of, of public education or, or wanting to make sure their taxes are a certain way, uh, which is where we get our money for public education, they still are supportive of you. They like, yeah. they genuinely care about you. And I, I need to impress upon you how absolutely special you really are and how absolutely unique you really are and how much you will be missed. Yes. Um, John, you in particular, <laughs> very well missed really something. at school board meetings oh. in particular. Maybe I should ask them if they want a minivan interview of me. I, <laughs> I, 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 sure that. Sure that. <laughs> I'm not sure you want to go there, but um, but that's I mean you all decide what you want to do. But but you you've have added um, a certain flair to our proceedings, and it's been a great reminder. And and so here's what I need to tell you, yeah. is that you all um, in this class in particular, and and John, you had a big role in this. Were the impetus for the student uh, representatives on the school board. That was, I was very happy and, about that. And seeing um, how much value student voice brought to the table, it convinced the school board that they wanted to hear more from students. So that is such a positive. And, and if you all have a, a mark that you've left on the county, it's that you've impressed upon a group of adults who candidly, are, are a little detached from having children in the school yeah. system and the day to day. And that's okay. You know, some of them um, had students in the school yeah. system and some, and there's a handful that do have students in the yeah. school system now, but you added so much by encouraging them to have the courage to, to invite student voice on a regular basis. So that's a huge positive. Yeah. And 
our student representative comes from Mountain View High School. Yeah, Mountain View High School. Oh, yeah. So an indirect, an indirect yeah. Mountain View High School is the best part about Stafford School's answer. Is what I'm saying. Um, um, what is the biggest problem that Mountain View and Stafford County Public Schools Ooh. face, and how are you working to address it? So I have two answers. It's more Mountain View direct, and it may bleed into Stafford County, but for Mountain View. Um, coming out, and I'm going to say the C word, I'm, coming out of COVID. Sure. Um, C word. Big bad C word. Um, coming out of COVID, there's a lot of after effects that nobody really, I mean, we want to talk about, but we're so sick of talking about COVID that we don't want to talk about yeah. COVID. Um, but mental health is going to be a big thing. Um, and then academics. So mm -hmm. uh, student safety is always a concern just because I'm always a paranoid mama bear. And that's where, I mean, I think, oh, don't hit the minivan. Yeah, the minivan. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, that got that got close. That got close. I was yeah. yeah. Um, not be good. Not be yeah. good. It was, it this was is on camera for the show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we are in a parked vehicle. Yeah. 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 Engines off. I swear. Yes. There be no fault. In it. Right. <laughs> we are sitting here. Yes. Um, but I think the mental health piece. We're seeing an increase in just stress levels and um, lack of problem problem solving skills and how do I navigate when I feel certain feelings? What are my options? What are my resources? Um, and I think that's something that we need to take and we've been taking some steps to help um, with that. The other piece is academics. I think we've gotten so used to just, there are no deadlines, there are no timelines, there's oh, yeah. no accountability. Um, setting those expectations is very important for our future classes. Um, you guys, and I don't know how we came out as well as we did, but you guys navigated a lot of these things. Took advantage of a lot of things. Found <laughs> <laughs> John's math homework back here. <laughs> but you Too guys- Too to bring that up? Okay. <laughs> Too late to turn it yeah, off. Yeah, 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 literally. Um, diploma, dude. <laughs> but that is something I think I we need to come out. back to <laughs> is just getting those expectations um, reset. And I think we've learned a lot of things from COVID where maybe things we were so tied on, we don't need to be as tied on, but there's a lot of things that we need to go back to basics um, because we are seeing a dip in academics and things like that. So those are my two focuses. Yeah, and I would say on, on, a, on a broader scale, um, we have great school leaders, great teachers, great students. Um, but in order to turn the ship on those two really big issues, um, it's not cheap. Yeah. And um, Stafford County has historically been uh, a, a county that has not financed its school system very well. There are 133 school systems in Virginia, and we are the 112th financed yeah. school system in Virginia. And that's not good given the fact that we are actually a pretty wealthy community yes. Yes. and we don't finance our schools very well. And, and I think if we are really going to be able to turn the tide on academics, on student mental health and just overall well-being of the school system, we're gonna we're gonna need a lot of financial support to make that happen to make sure that we have the resources to make that happen. So um, that that's where my focus is. Superintendents deal with the three B's: boards, budgets, and BS. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, I was waiting for it. <laughs> and so um, you know, there's unfortunately, uh, um, I've got the, well, fortunately, I have the support of a great school board. Um, and they are pretty phenomenal and they do support what we're trying to do. But there's a lot of the BS that kind of gets in the way of us financially supporting the school system the way that we should. So a, a tremendous amount of my energy is focused on creating community Not advocacy. fighting the BS. <laughs> to fight the BS to make sure that yeah. we have the budget that we need. Yeah. And you guys have experienced that firsthand this year just... We have a lot of kids in our building. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was very crowded this year, so it's going to be even more crowded next year. So just thinking about those things as we go through. But um, resources would be nice, especially for some of, the men some of the mental health pieces, I think, that you guys have been struggling with and experiencing and seeing with your, your peers. Yep. I just have a big KT written. Big so. KT. Um, I don't remember the perfect phrasing of the question, but uh, oh, anyway. <laughs> 
as you both know, Stafford is full of many great activities. So what is your favorite thing to do in the Stafford area? Um, so like hmm. places to eat, shop, recreational activities, anything of the sort. We have a lot of stuff also like, I know in Fredericksburg, I feel like a lot of the time we're always like, oh, let's go to Fredericksburg and do this thing. Like what in Stafford is like your favorite mm. thing to do? Hmm. I don't think our day to day. <laughs> so I have toddlers. Again, I'm gonna repeat it. Toddlers, they're not eighteen year olds. <laughs> toddlers. Um but we we always look for like little things to do. So I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, so I still am learning the area and I've been here for fifteen years, but I'm directionally challenged. So mm. that is like something that I own and I just it is what it is. Um but we explore little parks and um, activities. There was a, oh gosh, what was it? It was a paint activity with Ed Melcher's. Gary Melcher's. Yes. Okay, yeah. So it was, um, they did like a reading activity and then they did some painting with the kids and they had like, That's so right. I look for little things that just Stafford has to offer. Um, my husband is Native American. He's part of the Patawamic Indian tribe in South Stafford. So they have their Patawamic Indian lands and so they're building some different um like mock teepees and other things that were sure. native to those lands so just experiencing some of those cultural pieces um food i love food i love to eat yeah so sunken well um is one of my favorites they have a great brunch there's a pancake about this size if oh, you oh, ever get wow. it it's the best thing in the entire world this down? yes yeah. please yeah. <laughs> um do we go to barley naked yes i like yeah. barley naked for yeah. the food truck. <laughs> for the food trucks. See, yeah, weirdly enough, I like to go there with my family. I get kombucha. Oh, yeah. I, 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 get, I get kombucha yeah. and food. So. For the food trucks? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yep. Food trucks. Um, <laughs> but I, there's a lot of restaurants. I'm going to let you answer a few things. I'm going to think of my favorite food places. Yeah. So I'm a I'm a history nerd. I, I was a social studies teacher. So oh, this, this place mm -hmm. is super rich yes. and in uh, um, early American history, which is like the area that I studied the most and, and just really enjoy that. I can't say that my family really enjoys that, but <laughs> I really enjoy that. Um, and, and I think we're still discovering. I've, I've been here for a year and a half now. And so we, we are still discovering Stafford County. Um, I would say in general that there's a little bit of a, a frustration or a pain point in Stafford that we have a lot of gas stations, a lot of houses Just and a lot of fast units. food uh, mm -hmm. restaurants and a lot of storage and that there is the opportunity for a lot of uh, development, things like a movie theater and things like oh. some other things that would be a nice add to the uh, Stafford community. So but we're supposed to have that. But there, but there <laughs> are like some, right. some rich historical sites and yes. some things. I've, I've, I've been to the Patawamak uh, Indian site and it is spectacular. Yep. Um, they really are doing some really cool things. Um, and, and Fairy Farm, of course, is also pretty spectacular. The little cute downtown strip of uh, Falmouth is really yeah. neat as well. Um, I, I think that there's a ton of great restaurants here. Um, can I tell you my favorite one right now <laughs> is Rico's Tacos Moya. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right oh, my behind gosh. Uh, the uh, post office on Route 1. The birria tacos. Go to, go, go to Uber Eats, please. So good. Um, but there's lots of little neat spots. Um, uh, um, uh, El Basha um, on mm -hmm. 610 is great Mediterranean. The uh, Jamaican kebabs. food truck. Yeah. They have yeah. great oxtail. Seriously, it is amazing. So yes. I think there's lots of little hidden gems and lots mm -hmm. of little secret spots that, that really make Stafford just That'd be a delightful. cool show. Hidden gems of Stafford. Yeah. You should. Sure. Sure. Into it. Has yeah. anyone okay. here been to Monster Golf yet? No. Uh, no. I, I, I walked in. I want, you did? Yeah. I haven't gone to that. I went to the one in Chantilly um, like two years ago and I haven't gone to the one in Stafford yet. I'm like kind of scared because my boyfriend brought back, uh, Faith brought me back um, like a little oh, no. like, dog thing and it had like mold on it. And I was oh. like, oh. <laughs> Yikes. But I still want to go though. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now we, we have a, a sp kind of a special question. So you two are very interesting and, and public figures, but we don't know everything about you. Mm. So what is something about yourself that not many people know, but would be surprised to hear? Oh my gosh. Hmm. Surprised to hear. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I do like to eat, but that's not a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> do you, yeah. you bake, Miss Olin? I do bake. Yeah, I heard about that. I do. I have a bake shop. That's so exciting. It's called Sullivan's Bake Shop. <laughs> I have not baked a lot this year because I've been a little busy. Of course. Yeah. But yeah. I, that is my stress reliever. Um, 
What else? I didn't know that. You I'm, didn't? I'm pleasantly surprised to know oh, that. Oh. Really? Yeah. I have an Instagram. <laughs> Sullivan's Bake Shop. I'm going to have to look at that. Yeah. I'll have to stalk you later. Do you remember when I made macarons? Yeah. I made those. Well, I, I know you made them. <laughs> like, like, it's a thing. Yes, it's a thing. Oh, my gosh. What's your favorite thing to yeah. bake? Cookies. cookies. I like, so this is, it's tedious, but I like to decorate cookies with real icing and oh, do yeah. all, like, the pretty little things. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. Um, my husband hates it because I have, like, icing everywhere around the house. <laughs> my kids love it because they lick the icing up. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Yes. But they're toddlers, though. They're toddlers. <laughs> they're not 18. They're toddlers. Um, but yeah, that is like my soothing activity where I just like nice. decorate cookies. That's, That's awesome. Fun. Yes. Gosh, I don't, I don't know that I have a secret. Like, <laughs> I'd say secret a pretty, hobby. pretty open book. I do love to cook and okay. I do love to travel. People Ooh, don't, okay. people don't know a lot. They don't know that about you. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. say okay. a favorite dish, favorite place you've been. Well, you have to give them the background. Wow. This um, is like, it impressed me. This is like breaking news. <laughs> So he came and taste tested oh. with Miss Evans' class. And so I was like, hey, while you're here, come on, let's go eat some food that students made. He's like, okay. Yeah. So he came and like taste tested. And I was like, oh, this is, it's a little orangey. It's a little salty for me. He's like, actually, it is this flavor profile. And he was very yeah. fancy about it. <laughs> but I, he has a history. I, I, well, and I will say this. I, I did culinary arts. So oh, I was a culinary God. arts student and definitely enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's my stress relief too. But mm -hmm. but I do love to travel. Yeah. And, and I would say um, I've been um, to Asia. I've been to wow. Europe, been to South America. And I will say that uh, um, to the extent that I would encourage people to get out of uh, your zone and go and explore, um, it's just so enriching and so uh, delightful. My Instagram is actually dedicated just to travel with my wife. You have an wow. Instagram on travel? Yeah, it's just- That is so cool. But that's the only thing that's on there is a couple of life events, like graduations of my kids and stuff like that. But generally it's all about travel and it's just about me and my wife and the trips we've taken. That is so cool. I'm gonna have to follow you. Okay. <laughs> so this is obviously something not a lot of people know, yeah. considering. That is so cool. All right. Secrets out. <laughs> it was shared in the minivan. Yeah. Okay. Now. What happens in the, the minivan, minivan stays, stays in the minivan. minivan. Isn't isn't the point of this that it doesn't <laughs> stay in yeah. the minivan? Right. Well, <laughs> that's just a general rule of thumb. But yeah, it's, it's, it's metaphorical. <laughs> the metaphorical minivan. Listen, I feel like I've been kidnapped by John Hass this way too many times. Like, like this oh. was your idea. This one? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. That's actually one of the one of the inspirations. We were we yes. were it, I, I, we were I kidnapped moment. by John Hassis. That's not true. I, <laughs> we, we, I gave them a ride to a time capsule opening yes. from middle school. Yes. And we had the idea of like, oh my gosh, like we have people in the minivan all the time. We just talk. Like, what if we made this like a thing and we called it in the minivan? And that yeah. was, yeah. So that was the rest Genius. is history. Genius. Yeah. You're not um, doing a whole lot to dispel the red flag for <laughs> <you. laughs> Um, so lastly, we wanted to end with a, a classic question, a, a turn it back on us. If you could ask us any question that's school appropriate, that's, mm. I mean, I, I would hope. But uh, <laughs> we, we have to add that qualifier sometimes. That's not um, helping to the mini <laughs> uh, That all of us must answer, answer truthfully. What question would you ask? Oh, I got mm. one right away. Or you go first. Okay. Um, looking back on your school experience, is there anything that you wished that the school system had done or the school had done that you didn't get to do? Ooh. God, that's a good question. Oh. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Yes. You see, we're not very good at being interviewed. I have, like, so. this, isn't, this isn't like my main answer, but the one thing I will say for Mount in particular, I wish we could elect our class officers. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a big thing for me. Um, Cause I, I mean like, they're fine this year, but like, I think it would be better for us to elect them because they're trying to, re like, they're representing us. Yeah. So, not being appointed. We, we talked about like vetting, um, like, uh, uh, like three candidates get vetted, yes, exactly. and then there's a vote there. So, that way, it's three good candidates, pu right. public, democratic choice. I think the school system, because it's it, a very I thought, clever I thought, solution. Yeah. yeah. I thought the question was going to be like, oh, what would you change? And I'm like, I have an answer. I wouldn't have done CGS. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would I would have quit my <laughs> sophomore year and done cosmetology. <laughs> Miss um, Grigsby's watching. <laughs> she'd be like, she'd be like, no, I oh, love Ms. yeah, yeah, yeah. She'd be great, yeah. Oh gosh, this system. I don't know. I feel like Mountain View in particular has a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Um, I'm really, I love Learn and Serve. Mm -hmm. um, that was like highlight in my high school. Like, yeah. I never take that away. Like having that 
opportunity to go out into the community and like get my presidential service award and like do my own independent project i feel really helped me mature as a person Great. um so that's something that i really really love i know it's not something i wish that had happened differently but that's um a major highlight for me mm -hmm. um and going forward i think also you were talking about um like covid and like oh like the c word i think it's something that like we should talk about in a sense mm -hmm. because um i think what we look back at like previous this is like <laughs> way out of water but i think we look back at previous pandemics like stuff like the spanish flu or whatever um influenza and like people never talked about it and like how it was handled and i think that's why we couldn't learn from it as easily there's not a lot of books about it if you look for a ton of research right. on it i think if we encourage our youth to be more open about those kinds of experiences then they will go on to write books and talk about how it was handled and talk about what could have happened differently to create a better future. And I know that's like a Smart. really Love. big thing, yeah. but I think all of those things have to start on a really local level. So, yes. Yeah, that's my answer. Love, love, love. <laughs> Profound answer now. Uh -oh. yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, um, for me, I think like I never really like faced any problems really. I think personally, the one that I did have to face was just being a travel student mm -hmm. and like. Um, cause like, uh, and my younger brother, he's also a travel student. Uh, he was freshman this year. And like, I knew that there's a big trouble with the bus system. And I know it's really a complicated situation. So we, we understood the problem, but it was just a little bit, just kind of frustrating sometimes. But so you know I got rid of that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know. But my brother, it will like, he'll yeah. finish He'll finish out that. it. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, but yeah. Kind of an appreciation of the now no travel thing for like new incoming freshmen because as much as I appreciate CGS and I'm glad I did it and I learned a bunch of great things, met some great teachers and great people. <laughs> it was really hard. I mean, it was good to split up the day, but I think I still could have had the same like splitting the day effect if they had a site at Mountain View. And I know that's mm -hmm. out of control because yeah. um, I know CGS does their own thing yeah. kind of. Oh, yeah. But like, I like the school within a school model, but it was a little tedious to like go back and forth right. and then like the whole scheduling thing. So I'm glad that's. Got it. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna double up because one's short and then one's I guess a little bit more profound. Uh, the two C's, the good C and the bad C. The bad C, COVID. I think everything could have happened earlier. Uh, the return to virtual schooling, the return yeah. to in-person schooling, the return to no mask mandates. I feel like we were late to the game on all three fronts. Couldn't agree but, more. But um, on the creativity, I'm gonna say creativity <laughs> as the good C. I, I was talking to my friend about this, a, a couple friends actually about this. I feel like everyone should graduate high school with the confidence, hey, another C, that, that they can make something creative, right? So like whether that is CTE or, or whether that is fine arts or whether that is like even independent research. Like every, per I don't know how you could make that a graduation requirement or something, but everyone should walk away being like, I made something that I actually made, you know, like I'm really proud of, like I made music. Or, you know, like, I was in a show. Like, I did something creative. Or I did, like, individual research based on something I was passionate about. Like, I feel yeah. like everyone should walk away being, like, being able to look back on just some concrete thing that they did that was original mm -hmm. and, and creative. I just feel like that's just, it. It, yeah. that was my favorite part of my high school. Like, doing something creative and original. Yeah. So I feel like every person should get that. Well, I, I want to congratulate you guys because you really did make the most of yeah. your experience. You and you got... You got dealt a really rough hand for a couple of years, but you really made the most of your experience. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for doing that. It is yeah. what you make it, I think. I think a lot of people, um, if you go through high school, like just checking your boxes, you're going to hate it. Like yeah. you're going to hate it because you have to get up early, go to school, like you're, you're not going to enjoy it. But I think when you reach out, do extracurriculars, make good friends, like that's what makes it worth it. Like doing mm -hmm. the shows and stuff, I think for me has been like my savior like yeah. doing um I, and that was also one of the reasons i ended up quitting cgs i quit <laughs> after my sophomore years because i wanted time mm -hmm. to focus on like my extracurriculars and i felt like i couldn't um and that's another thing too is like other programs that like um could be implemented like obviously in the far future mm -hmm. is like um things that are more like specialized so things within like the arts and stuff i think would be really cool to yeah. have that yeah. Um, cause I know I, um, like the new school is going to be like the new high school is going to be like huge and hoping that they have like a big arts program. So actually yeah. they'll have a 1000 seat auditorium. Yes. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. It, it, That's I, extraordinary. Mr. Hokinson is, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. the t our technical director, obviously. And, um, he was talking about like the designs for it and it's yeah. so yeah. cool. It'll have a balcony. That's Ooh. so exciting. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I want to see their shows. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, we have a, a bonus question because that's what we do. We have a last question, then a bonus question. Any piece of you got skipped? Oh, we got answer. Oh, this is so embarrassing. 
This is so embarrassing. Yeah. What's your question? What's your question? So I think mine is more reflective because okay. I always want to do better for you know you, you know better you do better. So what can I do better for our oh, incoming wow. classes? Okay. Um, and just reflect with me. How can I do better for our next class? And you can't say dress code because that's already been used. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, um, I think, sorry guys, I'm, I'm just going to come up with the answer fast. I think, um, like, having scheduling things more, like, out there, or, like, the weekly mm -hmm. updates. Because I know uh, Dr. Temple did those, and it was really, really, really helpful. Okay. As someone who is very, like, boom, 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 I need that. Okay. Um, so, like, that's really helpful mm -hmm. um, whenever you would send out, like, those updates and stuff. Um, and, like, including all of those details. <sighs> trying to think of what else I, there was like one more thing that i wish we could have done this year but i don't remember what it was so someone else go i'll, I'll, I'll sit and stew on it yeah i can go next uh <laughs> i i um i would talk a little bit and this is not your fault just about spirit um because kind of covid mm. we kind of lost mm. that so i feel that's like it, more intentionality just with like we really really want to bring that back Love. you know that's that's something that was like w with with sea that we really kind of struggled with is mm -hmm. is is we more acted as a transitory back to spirit than actually spirit itself you know so just just making it so that we can really you know steamroll past all obstacles and like get get back to where it was because i just remember freshman year you know, like, yeah. I mm -hmm. didn't really participate terribly much in the spirit days because I was a lame freshman like that. Yes. But, like, <laughs> people did. Like, yeah. it was a thing. Yeah, and I was like, thing. wow. You know, like, that was what, that had a big impression upon me. So just kind of getting back to, I don't know, this maybe is nostalgia speaking, but kind of getting back to the yeah. old glory days in yeah. terms of spirit. And I'm not offended by any comments you guys say I want it. I'm asking for it. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually going to so. have to agree with John, yeah. especially with, like, pep rallies. Oh, my gosh, So, like, yeah. personally, I enjoy pep rallies. And I know they can't be the same because we can't have them indoors. And having the freshmen not facing large us. class. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> because we can't, like, bully the freshmen to stand up and they all it's, sat yeah, down. Yeah, we don't yes. bully freshmen. <laughs> <laughs> we don't bully. There's no hate <laughs> there. Yeah, so but because like um they just don't you know you just don't get like the same feeling that we did our right, freshman yeah. year so that was a big thing because then you guys like model what you guys do for the freshmen mm -hmm. yeah. we Except, model for the yeah. freshmen yeah. Yes. 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 yeah i know that's true Oh no, okay. <laughs> I was thinking of Miss Hamill, another wonderful teacher. I was, I was yeah. literally gonna say the exact same I thing. I love Miss Hamill. Um, she taught, I don't know if she was able to do it this year, and especially like within the IB program, they have like mentors for like upperclassmen yeah. and like underclassmen. <laughs> God, I'm not bringing up the joke. Keep um, going, no. And then, no, uh, no. It was, I feel like it would be good for underclassmen, especially those that came after COVID, to kind of have that advice from upperclassmen okay. who have like gone through COVID or were there before COVID, right. and kind of how to be a high schooler, like be successful in these different programs and like different facets. Of Perfect. And, and I think uh, to piggyback off of that, I think I think like intermingling within classes like that is mm. like very helpful. I think John and I have talked about this a lot. We both have our yes. like our uh, representative underclassmen. Yes. And like those really our successors. Yes. <laughs> Mine's a sophomore. His a freshman. Yeah. Are they're very 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 beneficial relationships to yeah. us and to them? I feel. Yeah. Um, so like being, yeah, yeah, being able to have that cause like, like she's like my sister and like, I know him and Aaron are like oh, really yeah. close. Like oh, that, yeah. being able to have that kind of relationship with another, with like a younger student and like teaching them kind of like, Hey, this is what I've learned as I've gone through these past four years. Cause you mature a lot in high school. Right. Like every, you're very different every single year. Being able to like kind of guide someone else, I think teaches, uh, both parties a lot. Um, so I think having some sort of program to that degree would be really really helpful i think the hardest part about it is getting participation because yeah. a lot of people don't want to be like don't want to ask for help yeah um but I, I i always encourage it so yeah that's awesome thank you guys all right so now we move to our bonus question uh buried in the 43rd page of the student resource advisory committee <laughs> oh <my> constitution <laughs> Approved by Miss Sullivan, uh, oh, states that John Hatzis shall be permanently appointed as Supreme Overlord <laughs> of the Student Resource Advisory Committee. Happy 500th yeah, that's, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Yes. Okay. So which one is it for, Christmas? For some context, yes. um, SRAC is Student Resource Advisory Committee. Yes. We help Miss Hamill out. We do um, think we do things called successions. So we teach success sessions. Yeah. Yeah. Success that's sessions. Teaching you know how yes. to be successful. We're currently be working on making like a video for college admission stuff nice. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So Love during Love Chris, around Christmas time, we were like, "Oh, we're gonna do the twelve days of <laughs> <laughs> and then nothing happens. So now we just have kept it going. 
going, and we'll just say, oh, random, like, happy 317th day of SRAC. That's the joke. Yes. Because, <laughs> um, like, we, we tried to kind of fill that that hole. We've done a pretty pretty okay job, if you ask me, of, like, you know, you can go to writing lab to get help with writing, or yes. math yeah. lab to get help with math, but, like, you don't really get help for, like, common app. You, know, yeah. you don't really help for writing essays or SAT or study skills. So, like, we're trying to fill that gap, and so that's nice. why we were founded. Um, and we do some silly things, uh, like making the oath of office for SREC. So we would like Are to you invite you to, it, to join the Student Resource Advisory <laughs> Committee as, as <laughs> administrative mentors or administrative oversight. This is quite an honor. Uh, I'm, yes. I'm excited. Yes. Nice. I'm so really excited. will everyone please raise, raise your right this. hand? Okay. I... I, I pledge my allegiance, pledge my allegiance to the founding principles of SRAC, to the founding <laughs> principles of SRAC, to its stated mission, to its stated mission and constitution, and constitution, and to each and every member, and to each and every member, I promise to dedicate, I promise to dedicate each and every day, each and every day to the success of SRAC, to the success of SRAC as a club. As a club, club, institution, institution, and governing organization. <laughs> governing, governing organization. I swear absolute loyalty. I swear absolute loyalty. Fidelity. Fidelity. And followership. And followership. To Miss Hamill. To Miss Hamill. The SRAC Constitution. The SRAC Constitution. And most of all. And most of all. The Supreme Leader. The Supreme Leader. To this I pledge my sacred honor. To this I pledge my sacred honor. Congratulations, new members of the Student Resource Advisory Committee. Thank you, thank you. Um, our senior gift that John came up with oh, was God. a rack with the letter S on it, and then each graduating class puts a hanger. Yeah. Oh. Perfect. That's it's good. an S rack. Yeah, it's a senior rack. S rack. So, like I said, we, we're, we're, this isn't like my favorite club at all. Because we get to do really fun things. So now, you guys have to make sure. You have to check in on Miss Hamill and make sure that the club's still going strong. I can do that. Yes, we got yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. We already have our officers for next year. It's going great. Yes. Perfect. All right, so now for the actual final, final question. If you could give any piece of advice to the graduating seniors of the class of 2023 or even beyond, uh, what piece of advice would you give them? Mm. Mm. Silence. Gosh. No advice. No advice. <laughs> I'm kidding. Appropriate wait time. So this is something, and I shared this with, I think I shared it with the class. I'm sorry. Second person, don't hit us. Like you drove over the hill. (laughs) Curious to see what, um, I'll I'll say is, um, you know, don't park like a moron. Yeah. Yeah. Is, my, uh, is my advice as okay. evidenced by I really need that advice. Yeah. Right so I think I shared this at our award, senior award ceremony. Mm-hmm. So um, this is something that I shared with my, um, so my dad passed in January. Um, and at his celebration of life, he was just so proud of, um, honestly, you guys, because he like lived through me, like hearing all the funny, crazy stories of the school, and he he loved that. Um, so, one of the things I guess advice wise for you guys is never lose your hope, determination. Um, always have a positive mindset because I've seen that true and true that that's going to get you through any obstacle that you face. So um, always know that you have a home back in Mountain View. Your love supported. Um, if you need anything, we're here. But my best advice is just to go into the world with full confidence. Um, know that you've got a lot of gifts to offer and have that positive mindset and you will go very, very far. All right, I got a piggyback one, okay. which is make lots of mistakes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Make as many mistakes as possible now uh, and learn from them. Yep. And uh, and that will help give you the confidence that Miss Sullivan was talking about. And going with that, I'm going to piggy piggyback. Yeah. <laughs> but that is something um, also as far as like hard work and determination is um, I think what I've quoted at my dad's celebration was that means nothing if you fail and you don't know how to get back up and try yeah. again. Give so success is when you fail, 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 but you never lose that just positive attitude of, you know what? I did make a mistake and I'm going to learn from this and I'm going to grow. But if you don't do that, I mean, it's really all for nothing. So just yeah. never lose that. Okay, we're not going to get a piggy, piggy, piggy back. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, that's actually, unless we have anything else from the board, from the rest of the crew. 
Thank all right. Excited, thank huh? you all that for having us. That is awesome. 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 Yes, thank Yay. you very much. Now we all get to leave the minivan in dramatic fashion while the camera is running. Oh, Perfect. So it looks, it looks, it looks really cool. I'm, I'm out. I <laughs> don't think the door works. <laughs> so scary. There <laughs> Woo! It was hot in here. Right? <laughs> right. I guess you can't crank the AC. It kind of. I know. <laughs> yeah, it makes it makes it noise. So we try to get.